Yeah. You're tuned to Off The Ball, the most petty and ill-informed sports programme on radio, the Euro draw and other things. E-I-E-I-O. Stand up, sit down. And who has your club met? I'm Stuart Cosgrove, he's Tam Cowan, and you're tuned to the odd couple of Scottish football. <laughs> Indeed, welcome to Off The Ball, Tam, an unbelievably important day in the history of Scottish football. This evening, the Euro draw. Scotland, of course, in the pot, well, pot three, and we'll know who we face by, let's say, seven, half seven tonight. Well, all I can say is, Stuart, there are bigger things in Scotland. Um, Scottish people love their holidays. A lot of Scots go to Benidorm. So in the week that we lost Sticky Vicky, I want us all to think about that. When those ping pong balls tonight are <laughs> coming out of the goldfish bowls, <laughs> I hope we could just pause for a moment <laughs> and remember one of the world's greatest cabaret acts. <laughs> well, <laughs> thank you for that. I had never thought we'd start a show with that kind of tribute, but whoever Did this... Did you ever see her? Whoever this adhesive uh, spoke, alley is, I don't know. I've but, spoken to so many people people this week actually did see her act it was amazing and what was really sad see it to be genuine and all for her to pass away just before uh, she could put up her Christmas tree <laughs> <laughs> enough right on enough. you go no, I can't wait you. for the draw absolutely can't wait I'll tell you who I'm looking for uh, let, let, let's get your fantasy draw in ladies and gents tell us who you really want for the glamour for the rivalry to get our mouse absolutely frothing I do want England right but then, of I course, want them to be anywhere away from where we are. Oh, do you? Right. right. Oh, no, I've got a totally different outlook. So I want England, and then I'm, I'm still no, maybe I've no been keep my eye in the ball with European national football, but Albania doesn't look right in pot two. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking that they've still got some element of duddery about them. Mm -hmm. So I'll take Albania, and then there's, I know there's playoffs still to come in pot four. Uh, maybe a wee Kazakhstan if they get through, or Luxembourg. Uh, possibly. It's a bit of a yeah. long shot, I think, them getting through, but you did ask me who I fancied. So I'll, well, I, I'm absolutely shocked by that, Tom. That is proof that you're not going. Why? Because England. it's A-B-E, anybody but England. You don't want to be drawn in a pot, you're in Dusseldorf, and in your hotel, there's sure, 50 sure. England fans. Can I remind you that the last time we played them, we gubbed them now, no. I absolutely so accept come on. that there's a chance we could beat them. I just think for the glamour. A, oh, European, a European tournament is absolutely a huge party for Scotland fans. Right, And okay. you don't want people with a long track record of spoiling parties. But the European... Uh, the European Championships are not the World Cup. The they World certainly Cup. are so not. So I might have thought that... That, that is a matter of accuracy, Tom. That's got that extra luster, the World Cup. This is the yeah. European Championships. So if pep it up a wee bit, I demand a bit of glamour. The only thing I would say... I, is, see, I think it's faded glamour, that. I think the real glamour is us getting teams where there's going to be an absolute celebration of European football. I think there's a chance we could maybe even get a result against England. So who are you so looking for? Right, about... right, I'll tell you what. Oh, let me talk you through them, man. So who you want now to port one? You've got Germany, Portugal, France, Spain, Belgium and England. Who would you like? I, I want Portugal. And you think what? Well, maybe we've got a chance here result yeah. and there's a wee bit of glamour. And they're, look, they've got a fan base, but it's not an uber fan base. You're still in the world here getting tickets. You know, right. so you're looking for somebody that's not going to mop up all the tickets, but actually play a wee bit. Yeah, of... No, fair point. Yeah. And whilst you know, people in glass houses shouldn't throw stones. Yeah. Another thing I'm forgetting about England. We always play in England. It means that we're going to be in the same neck of the woods in Germany. And there's always, let's be honest, there's always the potential for a wee bit of bother. Uh, and it also gives the media something to you know go on about. They'd be spending their time looking for battles and pubs and things like. That. I just don't I want them right. anywhere. Near Let's see how your group and, goes. And frankly, gone, mate. frankly, Tom, yes. I am getting to the age where I do not want a plastic chair hit over my head. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's a valid point. Aye. Right, I'm t I'll take you into pot uh, two. Yeah. Uh, tell us who you want. We've got Hungary, Turkey, Romania, Denmark, Albania and Austria. All right, who okay. and why? 
Austria because it will determine. Now, the downside of that is Austrian fans can, of course, get to the game very easily. I mean, literally a wee drive across the border and they're there. But I want to check out simply who does St. Johnson's Sven Sprangler really support? <laughs> is, <laughs> who, who even is he? Uh, is he? He is our uh, wonderful uh, holding midfield player from Austria. He's All been right, a uh, revelation uh, yes. and lives in Perth, and as soon as Austria comes out the heart, poor old Sven will be getting tired. And you did, man, you did bring your age. The old hoose. You getting... did bring in your age as well, Stuart. I think the reason you're going for Austria, you're getting at the age of melancholy, and a wee tear <laughs> would run down your cheek. With what song? With what song? What's the song that would always bring a wee tear to your eye? Oh, Edelweiss. Yeah, yeah my that's, that's why you're forever. going for Austria. Yeah. Let's be honest. Was Hitler no Austrian? <laughs> he uh, was, aye. Yeah, and he was, was a painter. He was, aye, who's painter? Was he? Aye. <laughs> aye uh, no. Anyway, um, yeah, so we're going with... Um, you've, you've got Portugal. Mm -hmm. We've then gone to Austria. Then uh, Scotland. Right, then Scotland. Do you know it was uh, Eva Braun that invented the sport, the ball competition? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, right, pot three, that'll be Scotland, right? Mm -hmm. And then this pot four, so you've got Italy. Italy? What, what, what are Italy doing in pot four? Explain I that, know, anyway. That, uh, Italy, either. Serbia, are they out for revenge? Oh, so I we avoid them. Be, yeah. Aye. Switzerland, and then you've got these kind of playoff contenders. But And they, they look like the, the weaker team, shall we say. Imagine us. I'm going to wait on, I'm going in either or in one of the playoffs there. Right, and listen, um, I think the most... Although the thing is, if we got Switzerland... Uh, it would spell pass Portugal, Austria, Scotland, Switzerland. Now, what a nice way for a football team. There we go. Aye, very nice. Right, so listen, give us all your thoughts, all your theories, all your hopes, all your dreams, uh, whether it's glamour, whether it's being practical about it and think, no, we want into the next round. We want to get into the knockout uh, stages. Uh, who do you fancy in the draw tonight? I'm sure you'll join me, Stuart, as will the listeners. It's 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 billed as five o'clock and it's been slated. That's a, I like that word for things. It's been slated for 50 minutes. Aye. I like that word in that respect. I, I do, yeah. uh, But we hope it's no slated in the other respect mm. because these things can go on forever. Yeah. So if it's on at five o'clock, and I believe I'm right in saying, we'll get the wee plug in for David Curry. Uh, and the uh, sports scene results show. I think they've got it live. It'll also be live on uh, Radio Scotland. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, so that's five o'clock, and we hope as uh, build that it only takes 50 minutes and no more. And I, I don't intend, Tam, to provoke you by slaughtering one of your pals. Okay, go but ahead. I hope to hell that Rod Stewart is nowhere near the draw. Oh, well, I, uh, no, I, 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 no, can you think of anybody apart from dear old Alan McRae who has brought so much joy, humour, laughter, enjoyment to a basic football draw? Rod was incredible. A drunken Tory doing the draw, I think <laughs> not. He was absolutely hammered. What a lot of folk don't uh, remember. Do you know where that draw took place? Um... It was at a ground after a Celtic game. I, I think it was actually Clifton Hill. Was it? I, it might have been one of the last things that kind of put Albion Rovers in the map. If I'm wrong with that, please correct me, but I'm sure it was a ground like that. And there's old Rod, say yeah. what you want about him, but a global superstar at Clifton Hill. He yeah. could have been somewhere else that night. I thought I'm doing a draw. Everybody was wanting him booked for every other draw. No, you Who were. Who is doing it tonight? I actually, I'm sorry, Tam, we're going to disagree about this. Right. I thought it was utterly humiliating and I thought it made Scottish football look third rate. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, right, anyway, so... It, not everything in the world can be considered to be a laugh. It was pitiful. Oh, you are getting a, old. No, no, a drunken cockney. Tory. <laughs> he's a Tory, he's a cockney. He's drunken. <laughs> he gave, the guy who gave the middle finger to the Green Brigade. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, uh, that was the week then. That was, of course, talking of Europe, there was European football uh, this week. If anybody's got any thoughts on that. I only heard uh, the Aberdeen uh, game on the radio. Um, and so, Stuart, I'm not sure. Uh, I heard that an Angus McDonald scored a perler. Was that for I like Aberdeen? A Scottish football that sounds like he's Scottish. Also, he was with Aberdeen. Uh, right, good, yeah. right. I wasn't sure who he'd scored for. No. Because only heard it in the radio. No, but Angus but be, McDonald. Uh, don't worry about him. They'll be selling them to Finland next week. Uh, genuinely, any of my pals that are tuned in, I've, I've still not seen that go. If you happen to have a wee clip of it, uh, day pump it onto my it, phone, it's please. What, I mean, you know, 
I know you accuse me of being old now, but going back to the day, it's what would have been described as a raker. Aye, <laughs> like and that. I'll tell you what, going back in the day, Stuart, if we were kids, can you imagine those wee trucks, those wee diggers, whatever you want to call them, we've got two farmers joining us in the show, more about them yeah. in a minute, they'll know what these vehicles were called. Wow, it was like watching a mix of Top Gear way strictly come dancing when mm -hmm. you saw the way they cleared the pitch brilliant it was Absolutely beautiful brilliant. the choreography yeah. was amazing and uh, love Aberdeen, a shot fans, one of them. Aberdeen fans throwing snowballs and no one saying there could have been razors in them <laughs> <laughs> ban it stop it there could have been a here. bomb in there yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with snow wrapped in it <laughs> exactly it was a strange old game when Alpine got off the park and on the park and off the park on but um, as I say ultimately for Aberdeen it was effectively a kind of second string didn't really uh, matter of course for Aberdeen I uh, understand that the genius uh, known as Cantwell has been subbed before half time oh uh, well you know what I was I, I think a crazy decision by Philippe Clement when you think that man is always uh, worth getting you a penalty kick <laughs> uh, you know he'll be trying, you know I mean that's ridiculous you Aye. keep him on for a dive because Aye. this the past week Stuart we've talked about this for years in the show it comes round seasonally and about how we wipe out diving. And I'm sorry, with, with some ridiculous stuff in the show in the past, it was good fun about if you dive, you've got to play the rest of the game wearing a, a, a woman's dress and high heels. If you dive, you've got to wear a diving old school Jacques Cousteau yeah. style outfit for the rest of the game. But I think it may sensible, and dare I say, it's always the one that I back. I think we need to make diving a straight red. Yeah. Because that's the only way yeah. as well. We're the best one in the world. See, and this week, of course, it was Todd Cantwell. Uh, we had him with a stoter. I think the worst for me was Kenneth Vargas. At uh, Against yeah. your mob. Yeah, so I'll yeah, get in yeah. before you even say that. No wonder he gets surrounded by all the Saints players. It, it, it was absolutely unbelievable. And then you had big uh, O. Aye. Celtic the other night oh. <laughs> uh, desperate times call for desperate measures you know mm. but I think you need to show a straight red because Todd Cantwell when you think about it Stuart he's not really a, he's not like a soonest yep. in the middle of the park for Rangers he's not a guy that's maybe going to get involved in anything else yep. so he can take a yellow yeah. for diving because think he, well he's not going to get in for any big hard challenges yep. you know he's not that sort of player so it's easy ah we yell at don't worry about that you know and if we go to a penalty hey we've won a watch you know mm -hmm. uh, but I think it needs to be a straight red and that is when clubs own managers mm -hmm. would clamp down on it rather than as they all enjoy doing having a go at any opponents that do it yeah. I still say Stuart and he's, he's not motherable now so this isn't me just, just bowing to the motherable boss but Stuart McCall for me remains the only manager that I have heard uh, having a go at one of his own players and it was we he was a smashing me player for us we get two spells first one was much better Henrik Ojama you remember yeah, that I do, I do I remember him, yeah. but he was yeah. prone to going down too easily <laughs> and to be was fair to Stuart he McCall was entitled to? I, no <laughs> and Stuart McCall came out and he says he, he, he said publicly that he was embarrassed by that and it said I mean that, that was not Stuart McCall was a player right? he, he was the fiery guy in the middle of the pitch but then as I remember him so saying he was embarrassed a, by Ojama and I remember him saying at a mother would have thought of Rod Stewart being jaked at the <laughs> cup <laughs> I remember uh, Stuart McCall saying that a mother will do and he said that wee guy's brilliant he's not used to me sitting in the stand because mm -hmm. he's been suspended for mm -hmm. diving mm -hmm. so if players uh, uh, you don't want them suspended if managers don't want their players out goes for a straight red and I, I'm telling you that, that'll knock it in the head mm -hmm. Anyway, I read uh, a very, very regular Hearts correspondent uh, in the media this week who literally wrote a hundred things about Hearts and ignored Vargas dive. I don't like that. I think that f when you support a team, that's fair enough. I do. And when you write about a team you support, that's also fair enough. And if you even write with a bit of bias, that's fair enough. But ignoring something like a dive, that seems to me to be avoiding the inconvenience yeah, of criticising. Well, and again, Philip Clement, uh, yeah. you know, the new uh, kind of pin-up uh, yeah. Rangers manager, of course, until the other result uh, in midweek when it seems that they'd kind of regressed a bit. But I didn't hear a single reporter, radio, telly, newspaper asking him about the Cantwell dive no. after it last week. 
No, you know, ask this guy. He's he's meant to be the forward thinking guy. Mm. He, you know, I'm, I'm sure a, a, a guy like th- a him with all the right attitudes towards football and the way it should be played, and yeah, he's the real deal and all that. I'm sure he must hate diving. Yeah. So he, he should have been asked about it. Are you implying that there are sections of the Scottish press that suck up to Rangers? No, that's <laughs> if they would. <laughs> you, you, you got way. Uh, so listen, uh, we're talking about all the uh, European stuff. The European draw being the biggie, five o'clock tonight. Tell us who you want and why. And uh, all the European stuff uh, from during the week. A horrendous, horrendous run of results in Europe uh, for Celtic. And then, Stuart, I keep saying to you, that strange thing, I know they did get a wee bit more money, but the Celtic fans will be saying, well, we're not going to spend it anyhow. We, mm-hmm. we, we don't spend money. We, mm-hmm. just, we just wave our balance sheets in there. But you've got that strange, strange thing that because of Celtic winning the league, they go into the Champions League, which is obviously harder than other competitions, and as a result of that, they now have no European football after Christmas, yeah. into the new year. Rangers didn't win the league, yeah. but they went into an easier European competition, and no matter what happens now, they are going to be in Europe after Christmas. Yeah, It's bonkers. Yeah, very strange. Give your take very on that. strange. Well, give me your take on Livingston versus Ross County, the match off today in the Scottish Premiership, uh, because of snowbound Livingston. But here's the thing, Have you Tom, got them all there? That yeah, I so have, far. yeah. Why Liv- you rattle through them? Livingston, uh, just staying with that, Livingston, rock bottom of the league, I think they needed to get something out of that game with Ross County. Ross County had a good win against St Martin at home midweek and that's just given them a wee... You know, it flickered them up the league above Motherwell, above St Johnson, and you just feel that if Ross County had got something on the road there, it would have been a powerful, powerful result. Livingston would have been rock bottom and struggling. Yeah, well, I'm, I must be brutally honest, Stuart. Um, you look at the league, you take Celtic and Rangers out of it, and you look at the general standard of all the other teams. I think this is one of those seasons that anybody could finish third and anybody could finish bottom. Well, there you go. I, I would hate to try and predict it. Now. Every, every man in their dug appears to be saying, yep, I think that's lovely. It's there. They don't seem as resilient as in previous years. They're, they're not picking up any sort of results. Um, Davy Martindale, if he had any hair left, he'd be pulling it out. Um, there's all that going on. I'm just saying, ah, it's probably their year. I think they'd have wanted the game on and they would have wanted I, a win because a win who, would have been... I'll tell you who's glad it's off. It would maybe even be Aberdeen because I think if results... Yeah. Going a certain way, Aberdeen could have finished this weekend bottom of the league, aye, which isn't a great look. No, but it is not. That anyway, we... can you rattle through all the other games that are off? Scott? Okay, the games that are off in the chat, we've mentioned the Premiership that's Livingston and Ross County off in the Championship. Air United versus Arbroath, Dunfermline Athletic versus Queen's Park, and Greenock Morton versus Dundee United. They are all off in League One. Allo Athletic versus Annan, Falkirk versus Cove Rangers, Kelty versus. Versus Edinburgh City, Stirling Albion versus Montrose, they're also all off. And finally, in League Two, East Fife versus Spartans and Elgin City versus Clyde, all off. Right, there we go. So, moving on as so well. That, that then raises the spectre, probably one of the greatest discussions we've ever had on Off the Ball. Uh, Clyde's game is off. Which bar in the Byers Road does Ian McCall go to this <laughs> afternoon? <laughs> oh, he'll be tuned in. Huh? Will, we, will we go back in there? He was the uh, uh, Ian, regular correspondent uh, on the show via text, but I, I did. I, I think they got Aberdeen in terms of the old Kerching and the Scottish Cup draw. Correct. Yeah. That's that's yeah. exactly what Clyde needed. When they're yeah. looking at, you know, saving the club, as I say, all these teams, Stuart, not one of them has bounced back mm-hmm. when they've fallen down the trap door. Yeah. Uh, Clyde, you know, and we all know it was a number of years ago, but, you know, winning the Scottish Cup twice, I think it was in the, the late 50s, a club with great history, mm-hmm. a club that, you know, you immediately hang Is three. winning the Scottish Cup twice something that you really... Aye, all right. <laughs> uh, but, you know, you think Craig Brown, you think Pat Nevin, we think dear old Tommy Ring, you know. Yeah. It'd be a real, real shame. I yep. know that's just uh, emotional guff. Yeah, and if it they is don't emotional get the result, they should get down. I am willing to put a fiver here and now oh. saying that Brecon will bounce back. Aye, but I Brecon, think Brecon aye. will be back in the league. And that's why a, a wee, I, I still think a wee body blow with them losing their manager, losing Craig Levine. Um, you know, but yeah, they, they, they've got, they've certainly got the ambition and, you know, they have got the money, which is crucial. Uh, but listen, our second, we'd better rattle through just the rest of these top points. Ian 
E-I-E-I-O is number two. We have got two farmers uh, joining us uh, shortly. In fact, we'll wait the farmer chat till they both come in. That's Jim Smith and Cammy Wilson. So have a think, our dear listeners, you and farmers, the farming community. Do you know any farmers? Are you a farmer? Have you worked in a farm? Who are the famous farmers? We were thinking about that from the world of like, films. Uh, telly, fiction and all that but then you added on we, we know of many a footballer certainly the old days going into the licensed trade game and all the pubs the polis, or, the polis yeah. not, but you were wondering if any uh, footballers out there and we were racking our brains going in to farming I, I'm not aware of it I mean clearly for me the biggest of all time was Mr Bruce McDermott who devoted his time life and eventually his uh uh, his um, uh, his life and his land to St Johnson, hence McDermott Park. So and I mean, he's been huge. The guy, us. of course. I uh, farmer, Tom farmer, yeah, Tom farmer. <laughs> Aye. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so if, if anybody can uh, help us out with that, that'd be great. But we just want you to think of all things farming. Right, it's almost like a one-word topic: farmers. Right, give us all your tales. Uh, the brushes you've had with the farmers, the buying the milk or the strawberries or whatever straight from them. Mm. Is there a farmer? You know, just a hundred and one things on that. That's number two. Number three, Stuart, one of those uh, farmers, Jim Smith, uh, part-time farmer, part-time comedian. Uh, I think he's nudging much more towards the comedian side of things now, of course, but Jim will give us his story. He is doing um, uh, Hug Money, it's going to be on, on uh, BBC Scotland. It's best described as a Scottish Live at the Apollo. So the Live at the Apollo stand-up show, which of course is done at the, is it the Hammersmith? Apollo? No, I think it's more in central London. Isn't oh, is it? it? Right, yeah. well, whatever it is, uh, they're doing a Scottish version of that. I hope Jim's no missed a trick, because if you're going to do a, a Scottish version of Live at the Apollo, what is on the grounds at where the old Apollo in Glasgow, the famous Apollo? Uh, well, where Green's Playhouse was, yeah, and then the yeah, Apollo. Then the Apollo. And What's it's... there now? What's there now? Aye, what is there now? We need, we need Billy Sloan. Aye. Billy, what is it that's actually there now? That would have been a wonderful place to film this. Mm. But uh, Jim will tell us, I hope, who's going to be on this, strictly a Scottish version of Live at the Apollo. And we're asking you, stand up, sit down. Stand up, sit down. Who are the stand-up comedians that have had you? Oh, standing ovation. And who are the ones that you would stand down? Yeah. Tell us the great comedians that you've seen and the ones that were absolutely rank raw and Stuart. And within five years, Tam, I want you to tell me, when did the term stand-up enter the popular vocabulary? Oh, I would have guessed America and I would have guessed the late 50s, early 60s yep. and the advent of comedians going on like maybe like chat shows. Yep. Like who was the guy that did the Beatles, the big break? Is that wee uh, guy? I, um, Ed uh, Sullivan. Ed Sullivan, right. I, I, that's what I, I would have, I guess at that, I would say late 50s, early 60s. And why were they called stand up then? Because that they was got that. up they just, off the they just and went... they stood up in front of a microphone yeah. and normally with a, you know, a mic stand as yeah. well right in front of them Good. rather than sitting down. Yeah, because it's actually gathered. Was, so was Dave Allen a stand-up comedian? No, because he sat on a, on, a, on a little stool. And how much did you want one of the wee stools where oh. the wee table thing had been like welded onto the seat? Yeah. And you could just have sat there with your drink and all oh, that. Fantastic, yeah. And, of course, uh, like Celtic, what did he have in common? Like Celtic? Yeah. What, what did like Dave Celtic Allen have week. in common with? Yeah. Oh, it must have been a, a meeting with the Pope. Correct, you're on. Yeah. yeah. Oh, because yeah. that oh, that's great. Well done. That takes us to our fourth topic. Uh, just before we brush by that, so we want the very, very best of stand up that you've seen and the very, very worst. Um, you know, so a best who are you going, Mr. Stewart? What's the best you've ever seen? Well, the thing about it is when Billy Connolly was his early height. He was stand up, albeit that he had his his uh, banjo and he would sing songs. He had pretty much left the Scottish folk circuit behind and had started observational stand up comedy. I think he was probably at his early height among the best that you could ever imagine. That may well be a, a, a Scottish thing because uh, he mattered to us, but nonetheless, I would go with Con early Connolly. Right, if only because everybody will say that, um, I better kind of set the trend. I'm not, I'm not even going to mention Billy Connolly because it's far, far too easy. So I'll jump down uh, one place and I'll say in terms of live, and oh, 
This is great because I'm a, I'm a firm believer that, and I showed you these photos, Jerry Sadovitz, who we're basing, could never yeah. have him on the show, absolutely over the top, and it always says so in his posters, his promotional stuff, you know, mm -hmm. if even remotely, in any shape or form, easily offended, don't, don't come near the theatre. Yeah, don't right? pay for a ticket. But what I don't... loved, the photo that I showed you last week, that it was my pal Sanjay, who's got Aye. the Murphy's Pecora Bar yep. in uh, Glasgow, um, he took another mutual pal, uh, my pal Raj, so, and Raj always wears the crisp white turban, the two of the boys went to see Jerry Sadowitz, right? <laughs> And it you was, used the term my pal. It was great. Loosely. It was great. And then what was great? They got Jerry Sadowitz back to the Indian restaurant. Yeah. And he was meant to be a brilliant guest. He sat there having a laugh and a joke and a carry on him. He didn't petrol bomb the place. No. He had his pakora. Thanked him very much and went home. And you think it's an act that he does. It's an act that the guy does. Mm. I know you'd met him personally uh, down south, and you know a bit more about him. I, as, uh, I think he's the man. I, I think. This is a sad thing that I'm going to say. Right. I think that he is a Scottish genius that has been badly and sadly overlooked and often quite marginalised within traditions of Scottish comedy. I think he's absolutely phenomenal. And look, here's the bottom line is you enter into a contract with him, Aye. which is if you don't want to hear jokes that kind of twist the logic of popular culture and take risks with people, Aye. don't go to see Jerry Sadovitz. But if you do and you want to enjoy a good laugh... Leave your senses at the front door Aye. and just go in there and get a laugh, right? Which we all need to know. Turn on that telly and it's mm. scary. Um, right, so we're asking you the very best and the very and worst that, day. And that's only the one show. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting to say that was Motherwood sports scene or something, right? But I'll take that, aye. Uh, and, as uh, Stuart says, uh, Dave Allen, uh, indeed to an audience with the Pope, Dave Allen, very, very... A lot of his comedy uh, about the Catholic Church, right? Aye. Like sketches and all the rest yeah, of it, yeah. jokes, everything, right? That was his kind and of And he stick. often dressed up as a bishop. Oh, all or, the time, yeah. all the great sketches. Uh, but who has your club met? So, all the photos doing the rounds of uh, Brendan Rogers. Uh, with uh, Pope Francis, some brilliant, brilliant photos. The Celtic squad, backroom staff, whatever, directors getting an audience with the Pope. All the photos are doing the rounds, so we really want you to think long and hard, mainly because we were struggling with this this morning. But who has your club met? Can you think of a picture involving your club and somebody famous, your manager and somebody famous, maybe a bit of a strange one, or any of your players? With somebody famous now, we were we were scrabbling about when I saw it. Uh, weak weak input here from me, but uh, David Murray, right, Rangers chairman, Rangers owner, he was very pally with Sean Connery. Yeah. So it wasn't the first time you saw the photo of the two of them up in the director's box. You've just asked for your club. Why when did Sean, you jump to Rangers there? Well, because, oh, here, oh, yeah, yeah, what, did you send that in by email or text or, <laughs> a, or was that a DM? <laughs> ah, you mentioned, ah, your club, so for the Rangers fans that are tuned in, that is your club. Yeah. So that's a famous one and I kind of think your mother will one anyhow. <laughs> uh, but, so we got that and the Celtic one, there's your balance, mm -hmm. the Celtic one, I would suggest, who was the rapper that Tommy Sheridan was in Big Brother with. Coolio, was it? Coolio, Coolio yeah. So Coolio got him. Coolio suddenly became a bit of a, mm -hmm. uh, a kind of a celebrity Celtic fan for a spell. Plenty of photos of him with the players and the manager at the time. So you get the sort of hang we were meaning. I'm, I bet there'll be some stoters out there. Unbelievable. And of course, uh, unlike uh, Celtic's uh, meeting with uh, Pope Francis, Pope Francis, of course, is unelected by the general populace. I mean, he's elected by a council of bishops, I'm sure, but he was not uh, elected by the populace, unlike Lyndon Johnson, the president of the United States of America, who was re-elected. He became the president, of course, on the death of uh, John F. Kennedy. That was a JFK moment when he became it president. Was, right? yeah. And uh, can I just say that in 67, when Scottish teams, including Aberdeen and Dundee United, went out, to help promote American soccer, Aberdeen became known as the Washington Whips. All right. And uh, it was Eddie Turnbull who'd gone with them as their oh, manager. I remember you telling me. Handed years ago. over a season ticket book for Pataudry to the President of the United States of America. And can I and just say, I did a wee uh, caption competition with that photo of Brendan Gay and uh, Pope Francis, the Celtic top with Francis in the back. And the winner of it was very, very clever. Hello. Uh, actually, a pal of mine, but uh, it's fine. Uh, Bill Caven. Hi, Bill. 
Um, his winning entry was the Pope being very excited and saying to Brendan, has, has Michael Matheson signed that? <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you know what we're after there And just one last thing The team of the week And, well, we're going to be joined by Jim and Cammy. Can I just point out to an absolute fact That we sometimes forget about Scottish football When would Brendan Rodgers have done that As a Leicester City manager? Not a hope in hell. No, no. And you tend to think that we often talk down our game and that everything in the English Premiership is uh, brilliant. But if the Pope had got an invite for Leicester, he'd just said, oh, give that to somebody else, you know. <laughs> <laughs> of course he would have done, you know. Aye, there you go. Right, if you've got any thoughts on that as well, uh, we'll take that. But for uh, Jim and Cammy, who will be joining us momentarily, uh, we're going with the Farming Eleven. The Farming Eleven, it's the only way we could go today. And uh, we had uh, John Barnes. Yeah, I like course, it. Yeah, the yeah. Barnes. Uh, Davey Hay in Davey the barn. Davey Hay yeah. and uh, just one for the farmers and we'll get the truth out of them with us. Uh, Subsidy on Dublin. <laughs> uh, there we go. We saw the boys coming in in their uh, Lamborghinis today. Uh, they'll be pleading poverty, of course, publicly, yeah. uh, but good on them. I wonder, um, has the earth fallen out of the subsidy thing since we left Europe? I ain't gonna ask him to guy. I'll kind of shelve my chat. Yeah. <laughs> uh, aye. But anyway, so we're going to be joined by the boys soon. Pat Show, uh, Jim Smith, Cammy Wilson. Uh, we'll tell you much more about them when they come in. But that was the week. Uh, who do you fancy for Scotland's group uh, when a draw is made for the Euros at five o'clock tonight? E I E I O. Uh, all your brushes, stories, jokes, uh, far.